Okay, so I think a lot of you are going to be able to figure this math problem out. It's not that difficult. Uh, the problem is 8 cubed divided by 8 squared times 8, and we want to get this down to one value. Now, we don't want to use our calculator, so put uh, those calculators away. We just want to use that supercomputer in between our ears, this thing right here. That is much better than artificial intelligence. As a matter of fact, that's actual intelligence. And uh, again, this shouldn't be too difficult of a problem, but there's a couple of things here. Some of you are going to get this right, but you're going to uh, do the problem in a much kind of harder way. Okay, You're going to kind of take the long road to get to the solution. And then some of you are going to make a very common error. Okay, uh, And of course, I'll talk about all this in just one second, but I don't want to give you too many hints as I want to give you a full opportunity to solve this problem. So if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer here in just one second, and then I'll walk through this, uh, to the complete solution step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades, and uh, really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the actual answer right now. We have eight cubed divided by eight squared times eight. Again, no calculators. What is the answer? Well, here it is. The correct answer is 64. Okay, so how'd you do? Hopefully you got this right. And if that is the case, let's celebrate with a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that you are a professional expert in basic powers and the order of operations. Uh, they really won't know what that means, but it just sounds so cool to say, tell them anyways. Now, uh, some of you got this answer, but you took the maybe a kind of a harder path, okay? Now, if you didn't get this answer, do not despair. This problem is not that difficult. All right, let's go ahead and get into it right now. So the first thing we need to discuss is the order of operations. Because here in our problem, we have uh, you know some things we can, uh, we need to figure out what to do first. That's basically what I'm trying to say, right? I can think about, doing division first. I'm like, well, if I do division first, that's going to give me one uh, value as my final answer. Or maybe I could do multiplication first. So again, when you have different things, you can um, different operations in mathematics, we need to know the right order. Because if you take one order, you're going to get one answer. If you take another order, you'll get another answer. But just to be crystal clear about this, in mathematics, uh, when you have two numbers, let's say I have numbers two and seven, well, what can we do with those numbers? Well, you can add them, you can subtract, you can multiply, you can divide, you can even take powers. And these are called mathematical operations. These are mathematical operators. So we need to know the right order to do um, a problem that has more than one operation in it, right? We need to know the right order. And luckily we have this cool phrase right here that will help us out. And that phrase is PEMDAS, right? PEMDAS, that's how you say that. And this is our checklist, and the way it works is we're going to start from this P, and we're going to work our way from left to right. Now, there's a cool little memory aid, and um, you kind of think of this, the technical term, I guess, of it's called a mnemonic. But it's just a little phrase you can say to help you remember PEMDAS, and that is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's PEMDAS. Uh, people have been saying this phrase for years and years and years, uh, probably like 40, 50, 60, 70 years. Who knows? Maybe they were saying this hundreds of years ago. <laughs> but nevertheless, that's the phrase, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, this means something. And you don't even like, okay, what does this even mean? Well, let me go ahead and explain this right now. So again, this is our checklist. We're going to go from left to right, and we're going to start with the P. Okay, now what does P stand for? P stands for parentheses. So if you see any parentheses in your problem, uh, you're going to go there. And parentheses can also be these brackets or squiggly brackets like this. So not every problem is going to have these things in it. So we just go through the checklist. Does our problem have any parentheses? No, but we want to check anyways, right? All right, no parentheses. So we're going to move on to E. So what does E stand for? E stands for powers. 
Now, some of you might be thinking, well, why don't they put like a P here as well? Well, a power has two parts, okay? Two to the third power. This little small number up here is called an exponent, and this big number down here is called a base. The entire thing is called a power. So really, E stands for exponents, but you can think of it as power. So we're going to look for parentheses. If there's no parentheses, we're going to look for powers. Of course, we do have powers, so we got to keep that in mind. Now, the next thing here is a very, very confused part of the order of operations. But before I tell you what that is, let's just go ahead and just tell you what M, D, A, and S stand for. You're probably thinking, does this mean multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction? Yes, indeed, you would be correct. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, you know, I'm just going through this checklist. We must do multiplication first and then division, right? Multiplication, then division, because M becomes uh, is first before D, from left to right. Well, not so quick, okay? This is actually a group, and so is this. So the way uh, PEMDAS works is you're going to do multiplication or division, okay? Whatever you see first from left to right. So if I see multiplication, then division, like here from uh, left to right, I see multiplication first, this is the order I'm going to do the problem. But if I see division, then multiplication, this is the way I, I'm going to do the problem. And here, right here, we have division before multiplication. So we have multiplication and division, but we're not going to just go right here and do the multiplication first. Okay, Very confused part of the order of operations. So now that we understand the order of operations, we... Um, know that we are going to have to do this first. Now, of course, you could do these powers. You might be saying, well, don't we have to do the powers first? Well, yes. Okay, but before we um, do that, we can actually rewrite this problem in a different way that will make it even that much easier. Okay, all right, so we're going to go ahead and talk about that right now. So 8 cubed divided by 8 squared. This is what we have to do. And a lot of you might be saying, well, you know, don't we have to do exponents first? Yes, we do, but we haven't even done anything here yet. We just are identifying that, okay, I got to do this and I have to do division, right, uh, before multiplication. So I'm kind of focused on this part of the problem. But there's another way we can write this problem that was much more advantageous. And let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so 8 cubed divided by 8 squared. I can think of this as a fraction. So I can have 8 cubed as my numerator divided by, this is my little fraction bar here, 8 squared, okay? 8 cubed divided by 8 squared times 8. So here is a easier kind of um, uh, format of our problem, okay? Because we're going to be able to simplify this uh, in a much easier way. Now, at this point, uh, we could, you know, say to ourselves, well, PEMDAS, you know, i got to do powers first uh, before division. So some of you might be tempted to go and do 8 cubed and go 8 times 8 times 8. And, you know, of course, you don't have your calculator. It would be a little bit of uh, work. 8 uh, squared, of course, would be 8 times 8. But don't do that just yet, okay? What we want to do is to uh, kind of look at the factors here uh, to make our life a lot easier. I'll show you exactly what I mean here in just one second. Okay, so 8 cubed over 8 squared times 8 is a good way to look at our problem. So what does 8 cubed mean? It means 8 times itself three times. What does 8 squared mean? It means, uh, means, it means, <laughs> as I'm saying a lot of 8s here, right? So 8 squared means 8 times itself twice, right? 8 times 8 is 8 squared times 8. So this is the way you want to think of this problem because here we have common factors. All right, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in just one second. Let's look at an easy example of what I'm going to be doing here. If I said to reduce the fraction 10 over 20, a lot of you might, uh, and of course I mean simplify or reduce, you might say, oh, the answer is 1 half and you would be correct, right? But why is it 1 half? Well, because 10 is the same thing as 1 times 10 and 20 is the same thing as 2 times 10. So in mathematics, when you these things are called factors, okay, because uh, we um, can multiply these two numbers, 1 times 10 is 10, and 2 and 10 are factors of 20. But when you have the same factor, okay, in the numerator and denominator, like this situation, you could cross-cancel them, and whatever is left is the reduced or simplified fraction. So this is what you want to do. We don't want to start multiplying because here we see that we have common factors. So we're going to be able to, uh, you know, really make this easy on ourselves. We don't want to just jump in and start doing multiplication, okay? 
All right, so we're going to see that right now, but I wanted to just kind of make sure you understood exactly what I'm going to uh, be doing. All right, now before I take that step, I'd love uh, for you to take the step of hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell. This really helps me tremendously. Uh, I've been really grateful to have some pretty awesome growth on my YouTube channel. Every single subscriber, every single view is, uh, you know, really, I, you know, I, the way I interpret that is a person on the other end of that. And my passion is to try to help you with mathematics. So if you're getting some sort of value out of my content, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell. That really goes a long way for me. All right, back to the problem. Okay, so now that we know that we can cross cancel like factors, we just don't want to start doing this multiplication yet, right? Now we have the problem structured here. We have eight cubed divided by eight squared times eight. So here I'm thinking, okay, I got an eight and an eight here. These are like factors. So one factor for one factor, for one like factor for one like factor. In other words, this eight can only cross cancel with one other eight. So this eight can cross cancel with this eight. So I'm left with this one eight up here. So eight times eight is what this comes down to. And of course, eight times eight is 64. All right, so that is the most efficient way to do the problem. Uh, of course, if you took 8 times 8 times 8, you did all that work, you know, did the multiplication, they divided it by 64, that's fine too. But I want you to kind of always think, um, you know, do problems uh, as efficiently as possible, especially when you don't have a calculator. And, uh, and if you're uh, doing a kind of algebra version of this problem where there's variables instead of numbers, you know, of course, a uh, calculator is not going to be able to help you out. But uh, here's the bottom line, okay? It's one thing to watch me do a math problem, but if you truly want to get better at math, you have to practice, okay? But just don't practice, you know, uh, if you don't really have a full grasp on things. What you want to do is get great instruction, and that's what I'm trying to provide, clear and understandable instruction. Make sure you get that first, and then practice and build up your skill sets, all right? So I'll leave, uh, I will leave links to my most um, popular courses in the description of this video. So this kind of stuff right here could be, uh, it's just kind of like pre-algebra, algebra, algebra um, type of concepts because we are dealing with powers. But I do have a wonderful little mini uh, basic math course. It's called my Math Foundations course. I'll leave that in the description as well. But I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that you can use as practice prompts. So... The bottom line is this, if you truly want to improve in math, you've got to put in the work. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.